So let's suppose I want to differentiate a function like f of x equals, equals x cubed. Right? Now, I, I remember the product rule. Right? The product rule tells me that the derivative of this function at a is 3a squared. Right? I brought down the 3. I subtracted 1 from 3 to get the 2 in the exponent. And since the input is called a, the variable here is called a. So that's the derivative of the function at the point a, 3a squared. Now, you just remember that from the product rule, but why? Right? Why is that the, the derivative? So I want some sort of argument. Right? Well, what's the definition of, of derivative? Right? f prime of a is the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a. Right? This is recording how the output changes. And I divide by how much the input changes. Right? And this difference quotient is telling me something about how wiggling the input would affect the output. Right. Here's how much the input changes by. Here's how much the output changes by. And I'm measuring the ratio. All right, now let's just do that for this function. right? So that means that the derivative of this function at a will be the limit as x goes to a of x cubed, that's f of x, minus the function at a, which would be a cubed, a because it's a instead of x, divided by x minus a, how much the input changes by. How do I evaluate that limit? Well, here's the thing to think about, right? This numerator factors, right? How, how does it factor? x cubed minus a cubed is equal to x minus a times what? x squared plus xa plus a squared. Now, I can use that fact to simplify this limit, right? So this limit is the same as the limit of x going to a of x minus a times x squared plus xa plus a squared over x minus a. Now, if you're a little concerned about how this factorization happened, well, we just got to apply the distributive uh, law and make sure that everything over here just results in x cubed minus a cubed. So x times x squared gave my x cubed minus a times a squared gave me minus a cubed. And then everything else cancels. So for example, x times xa, that's x squared a, well, that is killed by minus a x squared. Right, so you can verify that everything else cancels. OK, so here we go. I replace the numerator. I just factor the numerator by, with, with this. Now what do I do? Well, I've got more good news, right? The limit as x approaches a doesn't depend on what this is equal to when x equals a. And in fact, this isn't even defined when x equals a. In any case, then that, that means that this limit is the same as the limit when I cancel these uh, x minus a terms in the numerator and denominator. Right? So this is, the, this is the limit as x goes to a of x squared plus xa plus a squared. Now, how do I evaluate that, that limit? Well, that's a limit of a sum. So it's the sum of the limits. So this is the limit as x goes to a of x squared plus the limit of xa as x goes to a plus the limit as x goes to a of a squared. This limit as x of x squared as x goes to a, well, that's the limit of a product, or the limit of a square, which is the square of the limit. So this is the same as the limit as x goes to a of x squared. This is the limit of x times a constant a. Right? Only x is moving. A is a constant. So this is the same as the limit as x goes to a of x times a. Plus, this is just the limit of a squared as x goes to a. a squared is constant as far as uh, wiggling x is concerned. So this is just plus a squared. I'm taking the limit of something that doesn't have any x's in it. So it's just the limit of a constant, so it's a squared. OK, here we go. Now, what's the limit of x as x goes to a? Well, that's just a. And so this is a squared. This here is the limit of x as x goes to a. That's a times a. And this is still a squared. So now I've got a squared plus a times a plus a squared. Well, that's a squared plus a squared plus a squared. That's 3a squared. And that's, in fact, exactly what I'm claiming up here is the derivative of the function at a. But this is a completely rigorous argument for this fact that you might have known from the power rule. But this is how you actually prove it, right? We use the definition of derivative. And by the definition of derivative, we can calculate out the limit. And we find out that the derivative of the function x cubed 
at the point A is 3A squared.